The Minister of National Security told the media yesterday that the public feels safe. The public is happy with the safety that they feel right now. As such, the residential patrol plan has been scrapped at this particular moment. In another newspaper this morning, the Prime Minister is saying that because it's causing racial strife among the country at a moment in time when he wants the country to be united in the fight against the COVID-19 disease, he has decided it was his decision to scrap it. We want to get some analysis on this developing story now with Ralph Miraj, political analyst. Uh, Ralph, good morning to you. Thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you very much for inviting me. Glad to be with you. What do you make of these two differing accounts to the one common uh, decision to scrap the patrol plan? Well, I find it difficult to believe Minister of National Security, Stuart Young. I, I, I noted um, some sarcasm in his, um, in, his, in, his, in his claim that he, the people are very satisfied with the level of security, um, and so he had decided to you know, uh, discard this decision. That, that, that can't be true at all. The people are not satisfied with the level of security in Trinidad and Tobago. It is an abysmal state. You look at the level of crime, the level of murders, you look at what is happening now as a result of COVID-19, where, where businesses are being penetrated and invaded and so on. So the people can't be satisfied. So Mr. Stuart Young um, is being disingenuous by, by suggesting that he, the people are very satisfied with the level of security. The point of the matter is there has been lack of transparency with respect to this uh, project that they were on. Um, there was some secrecy. We didn't know what is, what is it going to cost and so on. And people have forwarded the alternative, um, uh, an alternative arrangement whereby we could have used the defense force. And I have claimed over and over in all my analyses ever since this administration came into power that we needed to uh, incorporate the defense force in the fight against crime, not in an ad hoc way, not in an arbitrary way, but in a programmed, uh, processed uh, way with clear objectives, integrating the defense force and its skills and capabilities into policing, into powers of arrest, um, development of uh, intelligence capacity and, and, and so on, obviously police service and the defense force combined. So oh. it is the defense force, I think, that should have been given this opportunity. And yeah. people felt that here was another um, uh, instance where the government was favoring uh, certain maybe financiers, favoring certain groups in the society. Certain communities? Uh, and, and uh, you know, objected to it. So it is not as though they are feeling safe and secure as Stuart Young wants to claim. The other issue is that the prime minister you know, talking about racial um, implications. Uh, I think that is very, very unfortunate. I think the Prime Minister is absolutely wrong. What people uh, are concerned about is uh, this very issue of using, um, you know, scarce resources uh, to, to provide opportunity for what he calls the, what he calls the 1%. Um, so even if it is a 1%, 99%, conflict, as he wants to put it, it is not racial, it is not race, it is not based on race, it is based on possibly class, if you want to call it that, where opportunities are being given to a certain class of people, uh, that, is, that is the perception, when we could use national resources like the Army of Trinidad and Tobago, the Defense Force, to help in the fight against crime and to help in the security of the people of Trinidad and Tobago. But the, the police service, Mr. Maraj, I, I'm sure you'll agree with me, is... I, I'm, I'm not hearing that question too clearly. Could you just repeat it, please? The police service at this point in time have to be stretched. They, they have to be stretched at this particular point in the fight against the, the novel coronavirus. We've also seen that the Trinidad and Tobago Defense Force has also been deployed to help out. They've been helping out, as we've been seeing at Riverside Plaza, in building uh, different facilities for different vulnerable people across the country. So what then uh, should be the government's response to this stretch in our law enforcement uh, arms? Well, if whatever, whatever use is being made of the Defense Force is clearly on a reactive basis maybe a knee-jerk basis. It is not a programmed, integrated plan, a holistic plan that deploys the defense force to assist the police. There, there are some of us who feel, and I am of that view, that had this plan been conceptualized early enough 
uh, we would have already reduced the number of murders and the level of crime in Trinidad and Tobago. We would have had, you know, we would have established collaboration and cooperation, effective collaboration and, and, and cooperation between the defense force and the police so that it would have been an integrated, programmed, ongoing effort um, to utilize both forces of security for the security of Trinidad and Tobago. Um, whatever is being done right now, for example, is an inadequate. I, I live in San Fernando, for example. I don't see the presence of the defense force down here at all. Um, I don't see them around. I don't, I don't feel, feel their presence. And it is a comforting presence to have them. I uh, have the defense force, you feel, the, you, you know, because you, you sense that um, there's a joint effort. So um, there's, an, there's an inadequacy, I think, in the effort being made uh, by the government with the defense force to, to bring the defense force into, into the action. And so they feel that there are some gaps in the security, and so they want to um, hire and employ these four security firms, or maybe more of them, um, and I'm sure this would have been extended beyond the one month. Um, and that's what people, um, you know, seem to be, people are objecting to. Was this a mere breakdown in communication for these two differing accounts on the same topic? Prime Minister and National Security Minister. There's a breakdown of communication, you say? Was this a mere breakdown of communication for these two differing accounts this morning? No, I don't think it was a, a, a breakdown. I think um, these uh, they maybe they didn't consult or coordinate their response, but clearly the prime minister is the one who called, uh, called in Mr. Young and said, but look, in the light of this that's happening, we are going to uh, discontinue. Um, I am not surprised there's a different, there, there are different perspectives being, being given by, by each individual here. Um, but it's all coming from the same hymn book, really. Um, so I don't see a breakdown. I don't see any um, conflict between the two. I think that there's just two different perspectives coming from the same source these on this are, particular matter. These are matter. two and astronomical, two different, two different two astronomical and two perspectives that are inadequate. These are two astronomical different perspectives, Ralph. Uh, one is saying uh, the public is happy with the safety, and the other is, is, is I, I saying. I am not. Threat. I'm not hearing. So I'm sorry. I'm okay. not hearing you. Let me. Well. I, I want to go on to, to my next question anyway. Um, yeah. COVID and crime, coronavirus and crime. How big a disaster could this spell for Trinidad and Tobago if crime goes rampant at this particular time? I think all of the issues that have been plaguing Trinidad and Tobago, the economic issues, the social issues of which crime is, is at the top of the agenda, could worsen um, on, on, under this COVID-19 crisis that we are facing. And the government ought to recognize that. I mean, they have been doing a pretty good job so far of trying to contain the crisis, to contain the spread. They, 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 are doing, they are doing pretty well with that, and I think the corporation, the population, must be complimented and congratulated for co co um, cooperating with them. Um, but I am not sure that I have heard anything from the government dealing with the long-term effects um, of the crisis on our well-being, crime being one of them. The, 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 the criminals seem to have gone into abeyance for a while because. You would know to you, I have been reading about murders every day and so on, but I always felt that they wouldn't stay that way for too long. Right. And now they have surfaced um, attacking the businesses, um, invading the businesses, yeah. stealing from the businesses. Ralph, and I, it is very have... possible that they can do so in residential areas. Um, um, I'm sure I have less. So I have less than a minute, so I just want to get one final question that. in. I have less than a minute. I just want to stick one final question in. Uh, when it comes to residential patrol, is do you think implemented transparently and correctly, piloted correctly, that this could have been a success? Because this is not the first time that private security firms would have accompanied police officers. Do you think, really quickly, do you think that uh, put effectively in place would have been would have helped? Yes, it would have helped. It would have helped in the situation, but I would still prefer to see maximum use made of the defense force of Trinidad and Tobago rather than spend an um, enormous sum of money um, to hire private security firms. I think we need to be persuaded that the government is making a serious effort to incorporate the defense force into the, into the action. Political commentator Ralph Maraja, really appreciate your time on The Morning Brew and your analysis.
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Political analyst and commentator Ralph Miraj talking to us on a very important issue. We take a quick break. When we come back, we'll check out the Business Guardian.